What's up, Crypto Geeks? Back with another video. And today we again have multiple things to talk about. Some new updates, particularly when it comes to the lawsuit against XRP and possible reinstatement and listings on some major, major platforms, including Binance. Yes, I said it, Binance. And I'll give you guys some updates in relevance to that and what's going on with the lawsuit. Now we have a huge day coming up with the lawsuit, the 21st, that's only a couple of days away. So I'll talk about what to expect a little bit there as well. Please do me a huge favor and click that like button. Make sure you subscribe and share this video on your Twitter page and join my Patreon if you'd like. With that, I'll get started. I'll start by letting you know again, I'm not a financial advisor, neither am I trying to give you any financial advice. If you're looking for financial or legal advice, go on Google, search for your, your nearest lawyer or accountant, get some information through them. So the first thing I want to talk to you guys about is some big news coming out from ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da, Whale Alert. And you can clearly see here that Binance has just, there has just been about 20 million XRP or 20 million XRP moved from a private wallet or an unknown wallet into Binance. And that's not it, guys. Let's look at Hobi. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Again, had transferred 20 million XRP. So, and that is not it. Again, this is among many, many platforms that are moving XRP for a total of 106 million XRP. And I'll tell you why that's significant. Now, I've been talking a little bit about, over the last couple of days, about a possible settlement in the coming days, up to two weeks, we'll say, by the end of May. And why this is important, now I'm thinking from the framework of Ripple. Now, if I wanna add the biggest value to XRP, what do I want? I want the platforms, the trading platforms, like Binance, like Coinbase, like Hobi, or whatever that is, um, to have XRP ready to be sold. Because the moment you announce that there's a settlement, you wanna be able to take as big of an advantage as you could and raise the price as high as you could. So this is a huge benefit for XRP. Think about it like this. If, let's say, they announce a settlement and none of the American listings, Binance and so on, Coinbase, have XRP ready. You lose on a huge amount of potential. People are going to be reading the settlement. There's a settlement. Oh my God, XRP is going to fly. But there, no one's going to be able to buy XRP because those listings or those trading platforms don't have XRP ready. And this is what I think is happening in the background. I think Ripple is actually setting up XRP to be ready on the spot once a settlement is announced so that the trading can begin almost instantly so that when there is a settlement, you can take as big of an advantage as you could. And that will result in a significant quick rise in the price and again, added value to XRP. So this is amazing news. And actually, I'm not too shocked, to be honest. I just didn't think it would be as clear. And it, it's, it's becoming very clear now that they're prepping for relisting. So this is this is great news for everybody that's holding XRP. And this is actually should be a trigger to a lot of people that don't have XRP that now it's the time to buy. Because guess what? Once they announce, announce a settlement, and if the, the the platforms, the trading platforms instantly put XRP back, reinstate it, you're not going to be able to go in. I, mean, I can tell you almost, almost with entire certainty, unless you put in 10 times what people are putting in right now, you're not going to be able to get in because it's going to fly so quick that no one will be able to catch up. And whoever has it, has it. And whoever doesn't is just kind of stuck. Um, so the total cost of the XRP that was traded between platforms was 161 million dollars, almost 162 million. Huge, huge, huge numbers. And I can tell you, those numbers are not being traded for no reason. 
that means something big is about to happen. So that's that's my first uh, my first thought here. The second thought that and the other point I wanted to bring up for you guys is guess what? We have a new a new document released. Now we're gonna go back here just to tell you the source and guess who the source is, guys? Crypto Law. So they just uh, released a new document that was submitted by John E. Deaton. And if you don't know John E. Deaton, I mean, you, everybody that's in the XRP community should know. And he's the lawyer that's representing XRP holders filing a lawsuit against SEC, who are supposed to do what? Protect, uh, protect the investors. So basically, the people that they are claiming to protect are filing a case against them and are hoping to get in on this lawsuit on Ripple side. So big news. He just released the memorandum of law on behalf of the holders. I'm not going to go through the whole document with you, but I can tell you something with certainty. It is outstanding. I mean, he did an amazing job. Not only was it good, but it actually brought up a lot of the points that people, I don't know if they were afraid or just kind of uh, were not focused on discussing. And that's the linkage between the SEC and Ethereum, Clayton specifically, and Ethereum. And he brings that up in an amazing, amazing way. And it's pretty strong. I'm going to read it right to you the way that it says here. I'll start actually up here. Um, I know it's not highlighted, but I'll, I'll still talk about it. So the SEC has attempted to betray XRP holders can sell as an unhinged conspiracy theorist crusader unfairly targeting the SEC. And this is what they made SC, the SEC or XRP holders. In fact, SEC has threatened to sue every single XRP holder, which I mean is, is the dumbest move that they could ever do, particularly when they're seeing that the judge is not on their side for the most part. I mean, you're going out trying to say, we're defending investors, and then you say, we're going to sue every investor that goes against us. Makes absolutely no sense. And again, John is amazing at making that very clear. So he brings the, the, the issues that, you know, SEC being this amazing entity trying to protect investors, and he brings all of their downfall into sight. And he talks specifically about the director of corporation and finance, William Hinman. And he says, who declared that Ethereum as a non-security while being paid millions of dollars while at the SEC from his law firm and him being a member of the Ethereum Alliance. That is insane. And that is a big conflict of interest. Forget about what's going on with this lawsuit. That on its own needs an investigation. Furthermore, the former chairman, Clayton, who declared Bitcoin and Ethereum as non-securities while directing a suit, in essence, against its competitor, XRP, on his last at the SEC, later accepting a job at a hedge fund that invested $1 billion in Bitcoin, Ethereum, shortly before the lawsuit against Ripple and XRP. If that is not... A huge red flag to the judge. I don't know what is. And what, again, I'm just going to go back to the, the stop sentence here that, you know, when we talk about XRP holders. And they made XRP holders seem like the craziest crowd of people that are just about to lash out and destroy whatever at the SEC. But in another part of the same motion, I'm going to show you what what John uh, what brings up. And here it is. I'm going to skip through all of this. We're just going to talk about it a little bit here. And he's saying that the initial intervention was March 14, 2021. And the SEC at the time claimed that there was going to be a floodgate and it's going to make them not be able to do their job if, if this didn't end instantly. And he says, look at the date it is today. Where's the floodgate between March 14th and the 21st and and today May 17th these were all claims just 
as a mere scare tactic. This is unbelievable. He did a great job. And I was reading a lot of the Twitter comments, and this is, I mean, a lot of, of just regular people, but we would all, and, and me for one, be shocked if, if the judge didn't grant, uh, grant him involvement in this case. And if that happens, the SEC is screwed. And the SEC, you can look at how much effort they put in to try and end the involvement of XRP holders in, in this class action. So this is great news. But I think with all this positivity and all the strength from Ripple and XRP's community, I can tell you that this settlement is about to come in very, very, very soon. And perhaps none of this will matter in a couple of days. I just had a suspicion, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is reality, but there was a day where co-CEO of Ripple said something. I'm going to show you what he said. David Schwartz said, let's take a look. Maybe I can square down here and show you. May 14th. Today was a good day. And I think perhaps this is, and this is just my own analysis and my own kind of thought, that this was the day that they came out to, not a perhaps not a definitive confirmation of a settlement, but they knew that this lawsuit was about to end or it ended. So let's hope that's true. Let's, you know, pray for that and, and hope this ends soon for the sake of all of us XRP holders, and I think it will. I think we were, I mean, if it doesn't end, the SEC is bound to lose this case, and they're going to. They, everything is against them at this point, and, and uh, they can't last, last much longer. Please do me a huge favor and click that like button. Make sure you tap that like button, you turn your notifications on, and you click that subscribe button. It helps me a ton. It helps me a ton, and I would greatly appreciate it. I will continue to make videos for you guys daily, Click that like button, click that subscribe button, and if you want to be extremely helpful, share this video on your Twitter pages page and join my Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks guys for watching. See you tomorrow.